All right, so today we're going to um, start learning about genetics, and genetics is the study of heredity. So when we talk about heredity, we need to talk about the passing of traits from parents to offspring. So for this PowerPoint, we're going to use the Robbins family um, as an example. So we know that all of our DNA comes from our parents, but did you realize that exactly 50% comes from your mom and 50% comes from your dad? This is true to all offsprings. So my question that I said today is if you're exactly 50% your mom and 50% your dad, how come all siblings aren't identical? Well, let's first talk about what a trait is. A trait is a feature or characteristic of a person. So when we talk about somebody's physical appearance, that they have blue eyes or blonde hair, those are traits in our DNA. Also, behavior tendencies can be a trait and um, being predisposed to certain medical conditions like are you a hemophiliac or diabetic or things like that. So traits or uh, features or characteristics of a person. A person's traits are influenced by their genetic inheritance, what they get from their parents, also environmental factors. So when we talk about um, a physical appearance, let's talk about how genetics plays a role. Genes determine natural hair color. So a gene is part of our DNA that determines our physical traits. So your hair color, your eye color, the shape of your face, the shape of your smile, the texture of your hair. The environment would be like the sun or hair dye that changes your hair color. Now, let's go real quick. Just because I dye my hair from red to brown to blonde, does that mean that it in turn goes back and changes the genetic makeup of my DNA? No, it doesn't. My natural hair color is what my DNA says. However, I, with the environment, I can change it, but it does not change my natural DNA. So let's talk about behavioral tendencies. Genetics is when genes determine your tendency to use a certain hand. Are you right-handed, left-handed? Are you ambidextrous? The environment can learn to use the opposite hand. So since I am left-handed, um, when I was in school, they were trying to make me do a lot of things right. So I cut with my right hand. I bat right-handed. I bowl right-handed. I do everything with my right hand except right. So being predisposed to medical conditions, genes can determine the risk of heart disease. Um, like I said, being a hemophiliac. However, the environment Things that you eat. Are you eating healthy foods? Are you exercising? Are you smoking? These are things that can affect your disease. So let's talk about the word phenotype. This is a very important vocabulary word, so I definitely need you to write it down and write the definition. A phenotype is a person's version of a trait. So think of the prefix PH, phenotype. It's how somebody physically looks. So when I'm looking and I see that they have blue eyes, blue eyes is a phenotype. So, phenotype is your physical appearance. So, your blue eyes, your black hair, straight, silky hair, or curly hair, those are your phenotype. So, let's practice. I want you to list three traits that Dash has. And when you list Dash's phenotype uh, traits, I want you to list the phenotype for each trait. So, go ahead and pause the video now and write list three phenotypes, which are traits, that Dash has. So let's go into the definition of a gene. A gene is part of a person's DNA that influences a trait. So I have a gene for green eyes because I actually have the phenotype of green eyes. However, I also have a gene for blue eyes. Now, even though I myself do not have blue eyes, I know I carry the blue eye gene because my daughter has blue eyes. So we have different colored eyes, but I obviously carried it because to be blue eyes, you have to have two blue eyed genes. And we'll get into how we can figure that out later. So now a gene, like we said, is a part of a person's uh, DNA. There are two different types of each gene, and we call these alleles. So alleles are the different versions for the gene. So for an example, 
like I just said, I have an allele for green eyes and I have an allele for blue eyes. And when we talk about the Robinsons, the mother has an allele for brown eyes because she has brown eyes, but her son had blue eyes, meaning she also must have the allele for the blue eye gene. So every gene, which is a part of our person's DNA, can come into two versions. So list three possible alleles for hair color. So right now, pause it and just give me three possible alleles for hair color. So when we talk about alleles and the two different versions, here are the two different versions that they can be. You can have a dominant allele. Now think about the, what the word dominant means. It's very overpowering. It's going to get its way. So when we talk about an allele being dominant, it, in genetics, it means that that allele is always going to show. Pretty much, it will have the phenotype. And we represent dominant alleles in writing and genetics with a capital letter. So for example, if I tell you that brown eyes are dominant, I would write it with a big B. So anytime in genetics, if you see a capital letter, that means it is dominant, meaning that it is always going to show, no matter what. The other type of allele is recessive. Recessive genes are genes that are only going to show if there is no dominant presence. And we use a lowercase letter to represent this. So if I was to tell you that blue eyes is recessive, I would use a little b. So now let's look at the mother's eyes. She has brown. So her genotype is obviously big B, little b. But she has brown eyes because she has a dominant gene where her son has blue eyes. So the only way he can have blue eyes is if both his alleles for that gene is recessive. So his genotype would be little b, little b. So uh, all people have two alleles for every gene, one from each parent. Alleles for the uh, eye color gene from dad and the alleles for the eye color gene from mom. So going back to the uh, Robinsons, if the baby has blue eyes and we know that blue is recessive, then that means he obviously got a blue eye gene from his mother and a blue eye gene from his father. Even though they are not showing that gene, they can still have it and pass it along if it is recessive. So uh, um, this is what we call genotype, is a person's combination of alleles. So the way we're going to write it, like big B, little b, uh, dominant B, recessive B, that is a genotype. So that's how we're going to be writing, writing this down in genetics. What it looks like is the phenotype, brown, green, blue, so on. So your genotype, it's your genetic makeup. So let's go into genotype. A person may inherit two of the same alleles. And in genetics, we call this homozygous. Now, the prefix homo in Latin means the same. So if I was to get a big E from mom and a big E from dad, they are both dominant for whatever trait it is. So we would call that homozygous because they're both dominant. So we would break that down into homozygous dominant. So homozygous dominant is when you have two dominant alleles. So we would write that big B, big B. The other way would be, so, okay, let's go back to this. So what would we write? It would be big B, big B. That is our genotype. So how would big B look? They would have brown eyes, okay? So because these two are the same, and they're both capital letters, we call that homozygous dominant. Genotype is how we write it down, and phenotype is how it looks. So what if they uh, still have the same, but they are two recessive lowercase letters? Then we call that homozygous recessive. We still use the word homozygous because homozygous means same. So the genotype for little b, little b. And so what would the phenotype be? It would be blue eyes. So he got blue eyes because his mother gave him the blue eye gene and the dad gave him the blue eye gene. Now, what if they're different, okay? A person may inherit two different alleles. Well, if the prefix homo means same in Latin, then what does it mean for different? The answer is heterozygous. 
So hetero in Latin means different. So when you have a heterozygous gene, that means you have one of each, meaning that you are going to have one dominant and one recessive. And keeping in mind, the dominant will always mask the recessive allele, just like with the mother. She has brown eyes, even though she carries the blue-eyed gene, because brown is dominant over blue. So what would the genotype for this child be? It would be big B, little b. And so what would the phenotype be? Would it be brown eyes or would it be blue? Well, remember, dominant always shows, so it would be brown. So this is the mother's genotype. We know this because she obviously has brown eyes, so we have to give her the brown eye gene, but her son had blue eyes, which means she carries the blue eye gene. So let's practice. Okay, we're going to go with hair this time. So big B is dominant in brown hair, and little b is recessive with blonde hair. So what's dominant, brown or blonde? The answer is brown. So go ahead and copy this box down. What do you think the genotype for homozygous dominant is? Well, that's right. It's big B, big B, meaning the phenotype is brown hair. So what do you think the genotype for homozygous recessive is? Little b, little b, meaning that the phenotype would be blonde hair. And heterozygous would be big b, little b, and so the phenotype would be brown because they have the dominant gene. Okay, so which genotypes are purebred, which is what we call homozygous? That would be the big B, big B, the little b, little b. What do we call a hybrid? That is heterozygous, and that would be big B, little b. So let's talk about being right-handed or left-handed. Now, being right-handed is dominant to being left-handed, and you'll notice when we did our poll today about who was right and who was left, 19 of you were right-handed, and only two were left. Handed. So that shows you how dominant right-handed is. So if I'm telling you that big R stands for right and little r stands for left, what do you think the genotype or types could be for a right-handed person? Well, they could obviously be big R, big R, but then they could be big R, little r. So either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So what do you think the only possible genotype to be left-handed is? little r, little r. So I'm left-handed like the other two, but both of my parents are right-handed. So in the left-hand column, I want you to write this down. What do you think the genotype for both my mother and my father are? If I'm left-handed and both of my parents are right-handed, which is dominant, write their genotype on the left-hand column and I'm going to check it. So let's go into P's. When we talk about genetics, you have to go into Gregor Mendel. He is considered the father of genetics, and he did all his study and when he studied pea plants. So I'm going to tell you that green peas are dominant, and yellow peas are recessive. So green peas are going to be a big G, and yellow peas are going to be a little g. So what would the genotype of a purebred, meaning homozygous, green pea? Big G, big G. A hybrid green pea? big G, little g, and a yellow P, little g, little g. Okay, thinking you have the way of doing genotype down? Okay, so if you need to go back, review over anything, if you have any questions, write them on the left-hand side, and we will go over this tomorrow.